tú ya sabes con quién traes la bronca. Para que sepas, aquí seguimos buscándote y no quitaremos el dedo del renglón. In a startling escalation of tensions, recent reports of the war on drugs in Mexico have brought the actions of the cartels again into the forefront of the news. The brutal tactics of the cartels are still very shocking, and now they are shifting into even higher gear. They are going after the army. What does this all mean for Mexico and the US? Stay with us as we go into the details of how a cartel boss has declared war on the US after a brutal attack on the army. Cartel versus Army A suspected cartel assault using drones and gunmen ripped through a remote village in Guerrero, Mexico, leaving at least six dead and 13 injured. The Guerrero State Prosecutor's Office confirmed the grim toll on Sunday, outlining the attack on the community of Buena Vista de los Hurtado. Details remain murky, as locals reportedly removed bodies from a burned-out vehicle before investigators arrived. While initial reports indicated five fatalities, further investigation revealed another victim. The attack comes amid simmering tensions between rival gangs, with officials attributing it to a clash between La Familia Michoacana and Los Tlacos for control of the drug-plagued region. Gruesome details emerged from the Guerrero attack, adding layers of mystery to the tragedy. Investigators learned, through interviews with residents, that the victims likely perished in a burned-out vehicle. However, before authorities could arrive, locals had already removed the bodies, hindering forensic analysis. Despite facing this obstacle, agents managed to uncover charred skeletal remains within the vehicle, confirming at least one fatality. Initially reported as five deaths, the grim reality unfolded further when the official death toll climbed to six. Alarm bells first rang when a local human rights group reported an attack on the remote mountain community of Buena Vista de los Jurado. The Minerva Bello Center, led by Reverend José Filiberto Velázquez, alleged the violence unfolded the previous day, perpetrated by gunmen and drones suspected to belong to the La Familia Michoacana drug cartel. The brutality left a trail of injuries, with six survivors seeking medical attention in neighboring Tetela del Rio. An unsettling twist emerged in the Guerrero investigation. State prosecutors revealed that their offer to families of the deceased, genetic testing to confirm identities and assistance with filing complaints, was met with refusal. This fueled speculation and unanswered questions. Adding to the ambiguity, interviews with residents yielded no confirmation of additional crimes, like forced disappearances or injuries beyond the initially reported 13. There's been this intense showdown between La Familia Michoacana and their rivals, Los Tlacos. Velázquez spilled the beans, saying, Loads of folks from the community have straight up vanished. For months, his crew's been shouting from the rooftops about how the neighborhood's been stuck smack dab in the middle of turf wars between these drug-dealing crews. It's like something straight out of an action flick, but sadly, it's real life for the victims. René Posselt, the spokesperson for Guerrero State, confirmed there was indeed a clash going down. But get this, he's saying it wasn't some targeted assault on the community. Nope, according to him, the chaos was more like a throwdown between organized crime gangs. Posselt mentioned they're digging deep into a video making the rounds on social media, supposedly showing members of La Familia Michoacana and the bodies of Los Tlacos crew. It's like a real-life thriller unfolding right in front of our eyes, with authorities scrambling to piece together what went down. Reports on the shocking footage allegedly shared by La Familia Michoacana showed armed men tossing bodies onto a bullet-riddled red pickup truck. The victim's apparent mutilation, with severed limbs and even one that was beheaded, added a layer of unimaginable barbarity. While the genuineness of the video remains unverified, other local media outlets published similar content, seemingly showing the same truck and burned corpses. Interestingly, the Guerrero attack seems to extend beyond the immediate casualties. Local human rights leader, Reverend José Filiberto Velázquez, reported the forced displacement of around 80 residents from Buena Vista, driven from their homes by the escalating conflict between La Familia Michoacana and Los Tlacos. Seeking refuge in neighboring Tetela del Rio, they painted a stark picture of the community's fear and disruption. The gravity of the situation was further underscored by the large-scale deployment of security forces. Some 170 soldiers, National Guard troops, state police and prosecutors descended upon the area in the afternoon, their presence a stark reminder of the fragile security and urgent need for answers. The Guerrero tragedy unfolded amid escalating cartel violence and shifting tactics. Just months prior, the Mexican army 
Army reported a surge in the use of improvised explosive devices IEDs, including bomb-dropping drones, by drug cartels. This disturbing trend resonated deeply in Guerrero, one of Mexico's poorest states, notorious for its poppy and marijuana plantations, both prime targets for warring cartels like La Familia Michoacana and Los Tlacos. The deadly gun battle between police and a narco militia over a drug cartel suspect wanted here in the U.S. The battle in Mexico over an attempt to arrest the son of the notorious drug lord El Chapo, turning the streets into a war zone. This attack in Guerrero echoed a similar attack cartel gunmen made in Culiacan in 2019. The Culiacan incident, also known as Culiacanazo, marked a turning point in Mexico's fight against drug cartels. This failed attempt to capture Ovidio Guzman Lopez, son of the infamous Sinaloa cartel kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, exposed the immense power of organized crime and the complexities of tackling it. Ovidio, wanted in the United States for drug trafficking, was apprehended by Mexican security forces in October 2019. However, the immediate response from the Sinaloa cartel was swift and brutal. Cartel gunmen swarmed the city of Culiacan, unleashing chaos and violence. The tense standoff unfolded in Culiacan, Mexico, on October 17, 2019. A large convoy, acting on a U.S. extradition warrant, arrived at Ovidio Guzman Lopez's residence. The mission, however, took a dramatic turn as the convoy was met with gunfire. While Guzman Lopez was initially captured, the military found themselves surrounded by heavily armed cartel and forces, transforming the operation into a siege. The precarious situation forced a controversial decision to release Guzman Lopez to avoid civilian casualties and potential escalation. Chaos erupted in Culiacan as a tense standoff spiraled into open conflict. Around 700 cartel gunmen responding to the capture of Ovidio Guzman Lopez unleashed a torrent of violence on the city. Civilians, government buildings, and even military targets came under fire, transforming the streets into a war zone. Towering plumes of smoke rose from burning vehicles, painting a grim picture of the unfolding mayhem. This display of cartel power forced a difficult decision, raising questions about the delicate balance between pursuing justice and protecting innocent lives in the face of overwhelming force. Culiacan convulsed into chaos as the Sinaloa cartel flexed its muscle. Hundreds of heavily armed gunmen poured onto the streets, wielding armored vehicles, heavy machine guns, and even rocket launchers. The sheer firepower outmatched initial expectations, painting a terrifying picture of cartel preparedness. The tense standoff escalated as innocent civilians, government buildings, and even military targets were caught in the crossfire. Faced with hostage situations and potential mass casualties, the difficult decision had to be made to release Ovidio Guzman Lopez. Culiacan, a bustling Mexican city of over 800,000, woke to the unsettling sight of charred vehicles blocking streets. And, the aftermath of the violence was seen in empty classrooms as schools opted for closure, and a sense of unease pervaded public offices where employees were instructed to work remotely. Even public transportation was affected, with few buses venturing onto the tense streets. The city, normally thrumming with activity, found itself in a state of cautious paralysis, awaiting further developments and hoping for a swift return to normalcy. A chilling account emerged from Defense Secretary General Luis Crescencio Sandoval, painting a vivid picture of the brazen attack. He described how armed individuals approached the housing complex, entered it, and opened fire, immediately escalating the already tense situation. Their aggression extended beyond gunfire as they abducted a civilian security guard and a soldier in civilian clothes returning from leave. These details further showed the calculated nature of the attack, targeting not only the complex itself but also individuals associated with security forces. With a civilian and a soldier taken captive, the attackers injected a personal element into the chaos, raising concerns about their motives and the fate of the hostages. Kuliakan's streets morphed into a nightmarish tableau captured on social media. Videos circulated showcasing a chilling reality resembling a war zone. Gunmen, some shrouded in black ski masks, rode menacingly in the backs of trucks, spitting fire from mounted machine guns as smoke choked the cityscape. Panic surged as terrified residents scrambled for cover, the staccato of gunfire echoing in their ears. Motorists, caught in the crossfire, frantically reversed, tires squealing as they desperately sought escape from the raining bullets. The harrowing scenes, shared online, painted a vivid picture of the chaos engulfing Culiacan. In the wake of Culiacan's violent turmoil, President Andrés Manuel López Obrador faced a firestorm of criticism. His decision to release Ovidio Guzmán López, the cartel kingpin's son, 
sparked heated debate. While acknowledging the cartel's chilling display of power, Obrador defended his actions as a necessary step to prevent further bloodshed. Culiacan's chaos left a nation grappling with complex questions. President López Obrador, under intense scrutiny, acknowledged the underestimation of cartel power. However, his stance ignited debate. Critics questioned the emboldening of cartels and the potential long-term consequences. Meanwhile, López Obrador reiterated the ongoing criminal pursuit of Guzmán López, sending reinforcements to restore order in Culiacán. The Culiacán saga took a dramatic turn in 2023. Following the controversial release of a video Guzmán López in 2019, a renewed operation in January 2023 saw him successfully re captured by Mexican authorities. This time, the tide had turned. Guzman Lopez was transferred to the infamous Altiplano Maximum Security Prison, marking a significant victory in the fight against the Sinaloa cartel. However, the effects of the 2019 incident have not been forgotten. Brutal cartel tactics. Now residents are fleeing the area and human rights activists say the drug cartel has dropped 33 bombs from drones just in this month alone. El Aguaje, a war-torn town in western Mexico, witnessed the chilling escalation of violence as a seemingly routine operation took a terrifying turn. Mexican police, tasked with clearing blockades erected by notorious drug cartels, found themselves targeted by a weaponized drone. The tranquility of the mission shattered with the drone's menacing hum, followed by the deafening explosion of a gunpowder bomb. Two officers struck in the arms and legs became the unfortunate victims of this innovative and brutal attack. The wheel of organized crime in Mexico has taken a disturbing turn with the emergence of weaponized drones in the arsenals of rival cartels. Gone are the days of rudimentary tactics. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, and Carteles Unidos, notorious for their ruthlessness, are now turning to the skies to attack enemies with chilling precision. These weaponized drones, laden with explosives and rain death from above, pose a growing threat to both Mexican and U.S. citizens. Beyond inflicting direct casualties, this chilling development signifies a calculated strategy within these cartels, the pursuit of military-grade firepower. By embracing these drones, they aim to operate with newfound power and impunity, potentially escalating the drug trade and tightening their grip on lucrative trafficking routes. Derek Maltz, a seasoned DEA veteran, paints a picture of the evolving threat posed by Mexican cartels. He views them not as mere criminal organizations, but as terrorist groups equipped with advanced weaponry and fueled by a ruthless pursuit of power and profit. Their arsenal, he warns, is expanding to include drones capable of raining down terror from above, posing a growing danger to both Mexican and U.S. citizens. This escalation, Maltz argues, is driven by a calculated strategy to overpower rivals, intimidate authorities, and secure control of lucrative drug trafficking routes. He predicts that these cartels will use the latest and greatest technology to achieve their goals. A glimpse into the chilling reality of cartel drone operations emerged from an anonymous interview with a Carteles Unidos member. This unnamed rookie operator revealed their organization possesses a significant arsenal, boasting around 100 drones. More unsettling, he disclosed the existence of a dedicated trainer, Lord of the Skies, who has been instructing members on their use since 2023. While acknowledging the drone's lack of sophistication, the operator ominously added their capacity to carry considerable amounts of explosives. Notably, the operator dismissed drug trafficking via drones, deeming it an impractical solution for the vast quantities CJNG exports to the US. The Mexican drug war took a chilling turn with the rise of cartel-operated drones. A recent attack in El Aguaje, attributed to the CJNG, saw armed drones targeting police, raising concerns about escalating tactics and potential lethality. While authorities downplayed the immediate effectiveness of these drones, citing limited payload capacity, the precedent is unsettling. CJNG's drone activity extends beyond El Aguaje, with reported attacks in Tepalcatepec and Baja California. Authorities also suspect drone use in drug smuggling across the U.S. border, raising the specter of a more sophisticated and far-reaching threat. Research suggests drones are already used for surveillance against Border Patrol, highlighting the cartel's evolving strategies. Another worrying trend has emerged in Mexico's drug war, the use of improvised explosive devices also known as IEDs by cartels. In the western state of Michoacán, the self-defense movement in Tepalcatepec reported a landmine attack on an army vehicle, causing significant damage. 
This incident, coupled with reports of IEDs targeting army patrols elsewhere, raises concerns about the escalating tactics. A spokesperson for the Tepelkatapec self-defense movement locked in a month's long battle against the Jalisco cartel confirmed an IED attack on an army vehicle in Tykstan, effectively taking it out of commission. While the extent of the IED threat remains unclear, the Mexican army acknowledges facing attacks with explosives, homemade armored vehicles, and drones adapted for bombing. This development marks a potential turning point, with cartels venturing beyond conventional weaponry and adopting guerrilla-style tactics. The Millennio TV station described these homemade weapons as crude PVC pipe bombs, highlighting the resourcefulness and potentially deadliness of this new tactic. Security analyst Juan Ibarola aptly summarized the concern. The improvisation behind these explosives signifies an alarming evolution in cartel capabilities. Previously, cartels relied on heavier weaponry like grenades, but IEDs offer a stealthier and potentially more widespread method of attack. Frustration simmers in Michoacan as residents chaff under a seemingly ineffective government strategy to manage warring cartels. The current approach, aimed at simply keeping the Jalisco cartel and the local Viagras apart, feels like a hollow promise for many. This hands-off policy, implemented by the army, grants the Viagras a disturbing level of control. Checkpoints and roadblocks manned by the notoriously extortionate gang strangle local economies. Businesses are subject to war taxes, further burdening residents already trapped in the crossfire. Anger mounts as the government's strategy appears to prioritize maintaining a fragile peace over dismantling criminal strongholds. Hey, Natasha, so one of Mexico's most powerful cartels, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, has created a specialized elite drone unit where these members of the cartel are being trained to turn commercial drones into flying bombs to attack rivals and Mexican authorities. The specter of drone warfare looms larger in Mexico's drug conflict. While authorities downplay the immediate threat of cartel-operated drones, citing their limited payload capacity, the potential for escalation remains a chilling concern. Defense Secretary Sandoval acknowledged the worrying trend, emphasizing the need for vigilance despite the current lack of significant damage. However, the fear lies in future possibilities. Cartels acquiring more powerful devices, utilizing drones for large-scale drug smuggling, or even employing them for targeted attacks. These scenarios paint a bad picture of the evolving conflict. Research further fuels anxieties. Experts warn of drones being used for reconnaissance against border patrol, highlighting the cartel's tactical ingenuity. Mexico's drug war is witnessing a chilling evolution in weaponry, with cartels adopting increasingly sophisticated tactics. In 2010, a car bomb detonated remotely via cell phone in Ciudad Juarez, leaving a trail of death and destruction. This marked a shift from traditional explosives, showcasing the cartel's growing technological prowess. Five years later, the Jalisco cartel upped the ante, downing a military helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade. This brazen attack underscored their ability to acquire and utilize advanced weaponry, further escalating the conflict. These incidents serve as stark reminders of the evolving threat posed by cartels. Do you recall that cartel attack in Culiacan? Well, there was a tactic that was employed by the cartel gunmen that crossed the line. They threatened the families of soldiers. Culiacan's infamous cartel attack wasn't just about firepower, it was a chilling display of psychological warfare. Beyond unleashing a torrent of violence, cartel gunmen crossed a disturbing line, targeting the families of soldiers. This tactic, exploiting the deepest fears of those fighting on the front lines, injected a new level of brutality and raised unsettling questions about the future of Mexico's drug war. The capture attempt of Ovidio Guzman, son of notorious drug lord El Chapo, on October 17, 2019, sparked a dramatic chain of events. Perez Salas, the security chief for the Chapitos clan, played a pivotal role in the unfolding chaos. Luis Crescencio Sandoval, the defense secretary, disclosed that Nestor Isidro Perez Salas, upon his arrest, was implicated in orchestrating an assault in 2019 on an unprotected residential complex housing families of soldiers. Sandoval stated that he was the one who ordered the attack against their dependents and families. This revelation underscores the gravity of Perez Salas's alleged involvement in targeting military personnel's loved ones, highlighting the threats faced by those associated with the armed forces
cases and emphasizing the significance of apprehending individuals responsible for such acts of violence. The capture of Ovidio Guzman, son of infamous drug lord El Chapo in Culiacán, unfolded in a dramatic and controversial manner. Initially apprehended by soldiers, Guzman's release followed a harrowing chain of events. Cartel gunmen, determined to secure his freedom, unleashed terror upon an unsuspecting community. They attacked the very heart of the city, an unguarded residential complex housing the families of those very soldiers. Bullets rained down, shattering the lives of innocent bystanders. Fear ran rampant as gunmen stormed apartments, searching for potential hostages, and even resorted to tossing grenades, thankfully duds, into homes. This shocking display of aggression forced a difficult decision, uphold justice or protect innocent lives. Under tremendous pressure and facing potential mass casualties, the authorities made a controversial choice, releasing Guzman. The military seemingly operated under an unspoken protocol, safeguarding soldiers' spouses and offspring from harm. Sandoval remarked that it was an area that was not even guarded. During the apprehension of Ovidio Guzman, Perez Salas purportedly played a role in instigating a surge of violence resulting in the tragic demise of 30 individuals, among them 10 military personnel. This incident underscores the disregard for civilian safety and the escalation of conflict when key figures like Perez Salas are involved. It shows that the cartels are ready to go to extremes to get their way, even if it means the death of innocent civilians. The Culiacan conflict in 2019 escalated into an aerial battleground as military Black Hawk helicopters clashed with cartel firepower. Forced to counter cartel heavy weaponry mounted on trucks, including 50 caliber machine guns, the army took to the skies. However, the ferocity of the cartel response was swift and brutal. Two military aircraft were struck by ground fire, forcing them to land prematurely. The conflict spilled over to the city's airport, where both military and civilian aircraft became targets for cartel gunmen. Cartel wars. In a pre-dawn raid, a video Guzman, son of the infamous Mexican drugs boss El Chapo, was captured in the northwest city of Culiacan. Culiacan's 2019 chaos, triggered by the botched capture of Ovidio Guzman Lopez, left a lasting mark. But the story didn't end there. In 2023, determined to rectify past failures, Mexican authorities launched a renewed operation to capture the elusive son of infamous drug Lord El Chapo. This time, the mission unfolded with calculated precision, a stark contrast to the earlier chaos. Guzman Lopez was successfully apprehended and transferred to a maximum security prison. This recapture served as a pivotal moment, demonstrating the evolving strategies and capabilities of Mexican forces. In a dramatic turn of events on January 5, 2023, Mexican authorities successfully recaptured Ovidio Guzman in Culiacán's Jesus Maria district. This marked a stark contrast to the failed 2019 operation and subsequent chaos. Air support played a crucial role in securing Guzman's arrest, a stark departure from the earlier ground-based approach. Culiacán erupted once again into chaos as the Sinaloa cartel unleashed a terrifying display of firepower. Truck-mounted 50 caliber machine guns roared, raining bullets on Mexican forces. The army scrambled, deploying Black Hawk helicopters in a desperate attempt to subdue the cartel convoy. The sky became a battleground, with helicopters spitting fire and cartel gunmen hitting back forcing two Blackhawks down in a hail of bullets. The violence spilled over to the airport, where both military and civilian aircraft were targeted, with one airliner taking a hit. The cartel's aim was clear, prevent authorities from escaping with their captured prize, Ovidio Guzman. But anticipating this very move, authorities had already whisked Guzman away on another helicopter, leaving behind a city under siege. The city became a battleground, with burning cars forming impromptu roadblocks and clashes between authorities and cartel members erupting across the streets. Fear gripped the city as gunshots echoed, even reaching the Culiacan International Airport. Two planes, one civilian and one military, were targeted on the runway, forcing their closure and grounding passengers. The violence extended beyond the city limits, with attacks on trucks in neighboring Sonora, prompting the cancellation of flights from another regional airport. The Sinaloa cartel, allegedly led by Guzman, responded. Roadblocks, vehicle fires and fierce fighting left 10 soldiers and 19 suspected cartel members dead. The flames of violence ignited in Culiacán quickly engulfed the entire state of Sinaloa. Following the arrest of Ovidio Guzman, 
chaos reigned supreme. Businesses and banks slammed their doors shut, fearing the storm. Even journalists reporting on the unrest weren't spared, facing demands for their car keys, transforming them from observers into unwilling participants. The ugly situation spilled over into neighboring Nayarit, where authorities braced for potential spillover. Fear painted the towns of Los Mochis, Guasave, Ahome, and Mazatlan red, with flames engulfing stores and casting an ominous glow on the already tense atmosphere. A fragile calm descended upon Sinaloa after days of fiery chaos. Ovidio Guzman's transfer to a maximum security prison in Mexico City marked a turning point, but questions lingered like smoke in the aftermath. The violence had choked Culiacán, leaving behind ash-covered streets and the scars of countless carjackings and confrontations. Unrest hangs over Mexico as the drug war, a seemingly unending conflict, rages on. This unbalanced war pits the Mexican government against a multitude of drug cartels locked in a low-intensity battle that claims countless lives and scars countless more. From cartel brutality to civilian casualties, the conflict's tentacles reach far and wide. While authorities strive to maintain order, the cartels adapt, employing increasingly sophisticated tactics and weaponry. The fight spills onto city streets, where burning barricades and shootouts paint a chilling picture of the daily reality for many. Mexico's drug war owes its genesis to the 1989 arrest of Miguel Angel Félix Gallardo, the undisputed leader of the Guadalajara cartel. This narco-alliance united powerful factions, but Gallardo's fall shattered this fragile peace. From the dust rose rival serpents, the Sinaloa, Juarez, Tijuana, and Sonora cartels, each led by ambitious lieutenants hungry for power and territory. Like predators vying for dominance, they clashed in bloody turf wars, their hunger for control staining the land red. This fracturing birthed a monstrous conflict, and its effects reached across Mexico. The roots of Mexico's escalating drug war run deep, weaving a complex narrative beyond simple narratives of good versus evil. Security analysts point a finger at the late 1980s when the Institutional Revolutionary Party PRI began to loosen its grip on power. This shift, they argue, shattered an unspoken pact between the government and drug traffickers, creating a power vacuum and unleashing chaos. Mexico's drug war can trace its roots back decades, but the 1990s came with a change. For instance, the death of Colombian powerhouses like the Cali and Medellin cartels created a power vacuum, a void Mexican cartels were quick to fill. This newfound prominence fueled their ambitions, leading to territorial expansion and a tightening grip on the lucrative drug trade. But this rise wasn't without consequences. The power struggle for dominance between these emboldened cartels ignited a conflict that continues to rage today. The insatiable American demand for cocaine fueled the flames of Mexico's drug war, transforming it from a simmering conflict to a raging inferno. By 2007, Mexican cartels, like opportunistic predators, had seized control of a staggering 90% of the white powder flooding into the United States. This dominance came at a steep cost. Apprehension of key cartel leaders, particularly within the Tijuana and Gulf organizations, triggered a bloody power struggle. Rival, factions, hungry to fill the void, clashed in a brutal dance of violence, their bullets painting the streets red. This fragmentation wasn't just an internal struggle, it destabilized the entire drug trafficking underworld, leading to escalating bloodshed and a sense of perpetual siege for many Mexicans. Decapitation strategies aimed at dismantling cartels backfired, unleashing a wave of violence as the fragmented groups battled for survival and dominance. Fractured cartels fought for dominance, their turf wars staining streets with blood. And the rise of powerful cartels like the Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation cemented this violent reality. In the seemingly endless dance of Mexico's drug war, authorities have tried every step imaginable. Since 1982, federal law enforcement has undergone a dizzying five-step transformation each one aimed at combating corruption and quelling cartel violence. In a desperate attempt to sidestep bribery, four elite special forces units have been formed. However, the nature of these organizations proves resilient, as they still always find new ways to infiltrate and manipulate. Nevertheless, it is still shocking that drug cartels rake in an estimated 13.6 to 49.4 billion annually a figure that dwarfs many nations' GDPs. 
This colossal sum fuels their power, fueling violence and corruption that ripple far beyond borders. With this, the US had to step in with the Merida Initiative, offering 1.6 billion and technical assistance to bolster Mexico's justice system. Mexico's drug war has claimed a staggering human cost. By the end of President Calderon's administration in 2012, the official death toll stood at 60,000, a chilling signpost to the conflict's brutality. Yet, the true scale of the tragedy extends far beyond these numbers, suggesting over 120,000 lives were lost by 2013, with an additional 27,000 simply vanished. Despite this, new cartels still rise like opportunistic predators, while established ones crumble under internal feuds or law enforcement crackdowns. Each disruption, each leader lost, triggers a bloody scramble as rivals jostle for control of lucrative trafficking routes and territories. The war on drugs in Mexico has become synonymous with grotesque acts of violence. Mass graves, dead bodies hung from bridges, decapitated heads left out on the street have all become increasingly normalized. Mexico's drug war paints a picture of vast criminal networks reaching far beyond its borders. Researchers even estimate a staggering 175,000 individuals affiliated with cartels. Recent reports by the US Drug Enforcement also paint an even more expansive picture, suggesting 45,000 members, associates, and brokers linked to just two powerful cartels, Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation, operating across over 100 countries. Now, the conflicts the cartels have between themselves and law enforcement seem not to be going away anytime soon. But what do you think? Tell us in the comments section. Also, to watch more videos with great content, click on one of the cards showing on your screen now.